Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. Today we're going to be talking about different types of light switches and how they work. You got any history about light switches? I've got a little. Uh, the first light switch that had what they called quick break technology was in 1884 in England. Hmm. And before that, some of the older style light switches, they, they separated the hot wires very slowly. And then what happens when you separate, let's say we have one individual wire that is our hot and we separate that slowly, there's an arcing that takes place. Mm -hmm. the, the electricity is jumping, the electrons are jumping from wire to wire, and that creates intense heat and pitting of the metal. And then when you put two pieces of metal back together, there's a, a, a big spark that happens, and that generates a lot of heat. Is so, it bad that that sometimes happens in my bathroom light yeah, switch? Yeah, it's time to change your bathroom <laughs> light switch. So with this, in 1884, they had this uh, a spring-loaded switch that allowed a very quick release of the contacts. And so the faster you can separate those two pieces of metal, you have less pitting and less sparking and arcing mm -hmm. and generating less heat. So the, the mechanics, it lasts a lot longer. And in fact, that's one thing customers would ask at the hardware store, you know, hey, what's the difference between like a 59 cent light switch and something that's 250? And it's really the component parts. It's the quality of the metal and also the spring mm -hmm. and the metal contacts when you're closing this connection and opening this connection because there's so much going on with heat and arcing and sparking that these 59 cent light switches they start to pit and break down over time and, and some of them are really loud when you flip yeah, the switch yeah, right. yeah, <laughs> what yeah, the heck yeah, is that yeah, yeah they're just different styles mm -hmm. um, uh, my mom has when I visit her condo you know and it's just I mean you can hear her when she comes out of her bed it's like <laughs> click click and it <laughs> reverberates down the, the hallway so you know where mom is you know there, there definitely is a difference in light switches so we're going to be talking a little bit about the different types of light switches and then how to install them. One of the first things you always have to do when you're working on any electrical projects is making sure that you're turning off the electric to that circuit. And so, you know, having a good quality electrical tester is nice to have if you're doing these types of projects. And I always, you know, it's funny, my dad used to work part-time at Sears Hardware. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, every year, you know... My mom was a store manager of Sears That's Hardware. That's right, store. yeah. Every year, my dad, for a present, he'd always make, ask me to give him a list of things I needed. And I always had him get me these cheap electrical testers. And then one thing, once we started making a little money, is we started getting better quality. And there's a, a couple nice ones in the market. You can go to your local hardware store and pick up a Gardner Bender or a Sperry or a Klein electrical tester, and they just do an excellent job. Rather than when we first started, I was just buying the real cheap import stuff, right, yeah. and it, it didn't last. It you know it broke very quickly. Mm -hmm. So you know, spend a couple dollars, and they have almost you know commercial grade things that you can get pretty inexpensive now at the hardware store. But you need to make sure that you're turning off the electric to any circuit you're working on. So the most common type of switch is a single pole light switch. What is that? So if you have one switch that operates a light or a group of lights or an appliance from only one location, you have a single pole switch. The way it's wired is very simple. You have two screw terminals plus a ground screw, and those two screw terminals can be connected to either one of the hot wires because a single pole switch is just a break in the hot. Mm -hmm. So in that electrical box, if you have white wires, they're going to be connected together with a wire connector. So there's never going to be a white wire connected to a switch. Because that's your neutral? That's your neutral. And so a hot is going to be on one screw terminal coming from the electrical panel and then the hot going on, let's say, up to a light is the other wire. And it's just as if you were to break that connection and the light switch is connecting it and disconnecting it. So a single pole switch is just a break in the hot. So that wire is going to be black or red? Correct. Well, okay, so let's, let's go deeper. So in Chicago and Seattle, there's only a couple places in the country where you have conduit, and so they're going to pull colored wire. But in most... Well, why don't you explain what conduit is then? So, condu so you've got this metal tubing throughout your house, like in Chicago where we are, you have, uh, starting from the, the circuit breaker box or the service panel, you're going to have metal conduit 
going all through your house going to metal boxes and a lot of the electricians in the Chicago area don't even use a ground wire mm -hmm. because all this is grounded at the box and then there's an actual wire that goes to a piece of metal a ground in the earth right. and that's how you ground it so the conduit is all grounded and through this conduit, you're pulling wires. Right, different color wires. Right. So, but in most of the rest of the country, you're using a, a non-metallic cable. So you've got an insulated cable that has, in most cases, either two or three wires plus a ground. Mm -hmm. So in the case of a single pole switch, you're going to have one of two scenarios. One is you're going to have one cable coming in with a black and white wire, and that white wire is actually going to be the hot and the way they denote that it's hot is they're going to put a little piece of black electrical tape on the white wire or they're going to use a little black paint letting you know that that's not really a white neutral wire it's actually a split in the hot so this is like the electrician that set up your house is correct they is should doing this. they should have marked so if you have one cable coming in to a single pole switch you're going to have a black wire and a white wire that needs to be marked with something electrical tape or black paint to, to signify that it's actually a hot. Now if you have two cables coming into the box, you're going to have a black wire connected to one screw terminal and a black wire from the other cable connected and then the two white wires are going to be twisted off with a wire connector. So there's, those are the two scenarios. But if you have one switch that operates one light, let's say, it's a single pole switch and all you have to do is turn off the electric to this circuit. You're going to unscrew those two wires plus a ground. Mm -hmm. And then with the new switch, you're just going to put it on either screw terminal. Because we're just breaking that hot wire, right. it doesn't matter which wire you connect. So this is the easiest thing for a homeowner to rewire themselves is a single pole switch. So both of the screw terminals are the same color. Correct. Yeah, they're the same color, and then there's going to also be a green ground, and you're either going to be connecting a bare wire to that, the bare wire is going to be your ground, or in the case of conduit, they sometimes run a green ground wire. Mm -hmm. So the next type of switch I want to talk about is a three-way switch. Why is it called a three-way switch? I, I have no idea. It be doesn't really make any sense, right? No, because a three-way switch is if you have two switches that operate a light or a group of lights, you have a pair of three-way switches. Right, so again, makes no sense. Yeah. <laughs> it should be a two-way switch, right? right? You would think so. Single pole, two-way, right, right. three-way would maybe be three yeah. switches operate a light. But that's really a four-way. Exactly. <laughs> Silliness. So if you have two switches that operate a light, you have a pair of three-way switches. And this is one of the most confusing things to wire for homeowners and also for most hardware store guys. It's amazing how many people I found working in hardware don't know how to wire a three-way switch. And there's a couple different scenarios with wiring a three-way switch. Let's say you're painting a room and you want to remove these two three-way switches because you want to change the color. What you want to do is always mark the common. So if your first thing you want to do is turn off the electric to the circuit you're working on and check it with an electrical tester. Then there's three screw terminals plus a ground on a three-way switch. One of those three screw terminals is going to be a dark color and two of them are going to be light. The key thing before you remove a three-way switch, if you mark with a piece of electrical tape or masking tape that wire that's going to the dark screw, that dark screw is called your common, that's the wire you're going to put to the dark screw on the new three-way switch and this will make your life simple. <laughs> so let's say we have two switches, we're going to turn off the electric, we mark the first switch, the wire that's going to the dark screw, we go to the second switch, we mark the wire that's going to the dark screw on that. So the wire coming in on that first switch, that common, is the hot coming from the service panel. That common, that dark screw, and the second switch is the wire going up to the light. Those two light colored screws are your travelers and those two, it doesn't matter which wire you put to which traveler. So that makes it very easy. Mm -hmm. But the key is identifying the wire that goes to that dark screw, and you're never going to have a problem wiring a three-way switch. Because on a three-way switch, there's no on and off labeled Correct. on the switch. So. And, yeah, th and that's a good thing to think about when you're going into the hardware store. So a single pole switch is going to have on and off marked on the lever itself. Mm -hmm. On a three-way switch, there's nothing marked on it because up or down 
is on relative to the other three-way switch. And a three-way switch is really amazing. I, I love the beauty of how it's designed because on that first three-way switch, so if you can imagine the hot is coming from the service panel to that common screw, and if your switch is, let's say, in the up position, that light-colored screw, so we have two light-colored screws, if it's up, one of them has electric. Mm -hmm. If we switch it down, now the other one has electric. So in that first switch, there's going to be one screw that always has electric. And then you can turn that on and off with the second one because you're either tapping in to that hot wire or you're disengaging it. Mm -hmm. And then depending on where the second switch is, either up or down, you can switch that first switch and always either push electric all the way up to the light or disconnect the, the connection. So just a beautiful, elegant design. So can you wire a three-way switch incorrectly and it still work the light? You can wire it incorrectly and, and you can sometimes get it to turn on and off from one location. Right. So, so, so <laughs> one of the first uh, properties I started doing the electric on, we would hire these electricians to help teach us. And then, you know, my business partner at the time, we tried when we were investing in real estate to then start doing all these projects ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we had this house, old house, and I removed the two three-way switches ran to the hardware store, picked up a, a new pair, and I got back, and this house was so old, the insulation on all the wires was just gray. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was no, you know, difference in them, and I didn't even, I had no clue that right. I would have to mark the wires, because all I ever changed before were single pole switches, and mm -hmm. super easy, you know, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. You just put the wires back on, you know? So I wired it one way, didn't work. Wired it another, I, in, in fact, I spent so much time, I got frustrated, I ran back to the hardware store and I asked them how to wire it, and they're like, well, you didn't mark what went to what? And I said, no, I had no idea. Because <laughs> it's a switch. <laughs> right, yeah. I just thought, it, you know, it's a breaking hot. So they didn't know how to teach me to, to work through, which we'll talk in a minute. If you remove the two switches and you didn't mark anything, how do you pro do the process of, of elimination with a tester to figure out how to wire it properly? So to this day, I'm sure that house does not <laughs> operate. You know, those two three-way switches don't operate properly. But the way if you, let's say you did what I did, and you removed the two three-way switches and you didn't mark anything. What you're going to do is you're going to find, first thing we want to do is we want to find the first box where the power is coming into the circuit. So we're going to turn off the electric. We're going to separate all our wires. So we're going to have three wires that go to that first switch, three wires to the second switch. Now what you have to do is separate them so nothing's touching. We're going to have to turn the power back on. And what we're going to do is we're going to test each one of those wires until we find one that's hot. Right. When we find that hot wire, this is the feed. This is the hot coming from the service panel. So it's the common. Correct. It's the common on the first switch. We're going to turn off the electric and we're going to mark that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to connect that marked wire to the dark colored screw on the first three-way switch. And then the other two wires we're going to connect to either one of the light colored screws. Those are our two travelers. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to turn the electric back on and we're going to go to the second, and, and you should put the switch back in the box and, and tighten it all down. We're going to turn the electric back on and at the second box that has these three wires, we're going to turn the electric on. We're going to start testing to find one that's hot. We're going to mark that. That's we're, a traveler. That's a traveler, correct. We're going to switch that first switch in the opposite direction and now we're going to see the second wire that's hot mm -hmm. and that's our second traveler so now we're going to turn off the electric those two marked wires in the second box those are our two travelers we're going to connect those two wires to the light colored screw in the second three-way switch and then the last wire is going to be the common the dark colored screw that goes up to the light mm -hmm. and that's the magic and that's what very few guys were able to help me understand when I was uh, investing in real estate right that's the step so if you have if you're replacing a three-way switch before you remove it mark the two wires that go to the dark colored screws and then if you've removed them you're gonna to have to go through the process of testing the wires and so just to be clear, you have to have two three-way switches. You can't have a single pole switch and a three-way switch. It won't work. Correct. Yeah. If you have a pair of switches that operate a light, you need a pair of three-way switches. So you want to talk about a four-way switch? Four-way switch is cool because a four-way switch, you can have three or more switches that operate a light. 
So it should really be called a three-way switch. A three-way switch plus. <laughs> so if you have three switches, four switches, five switches that operate one Who light. Who five switches? Really, really rich people. <laughs> so what, what's interesting is you always have a pair of three-way switches, and then everything in between that pair is going to be four-way switches. So if you have three switches that operate a light, you have a pair of three-way switches and one four-way switch. If you have four switches that operate your ballroom, you're going to have a pair of three-way switches and two four-way switches. And then it's it's basically the same way, you know, when you disconnect... Well, the, what does the four-way switch look like? Let's... So a four-way switch is going to have four screw terminals plus a ground. Mm -hmm. And every manufacturer is a little different. You're going to have... So in the four-way switch electrical box, you're going to have two cables. One pair of wires coming from one three-way switch and one pair of wires coming from the other three-way switch. Mm -hmm. And so you need to know which screw terminals to connect those cables to. So, so are the screw terminals different colors? In some companies there are, yes. And, and in fact, you really need to look at the box when you look at a four-way switch. Some companies will have them two light ones and two dark ones, and so each colored pair is going to go to a cable. Some are going to say input or output, and that's going to be a pair. Okay. And then they're going to have A or B. And then one company, I was, uh, I got one from a uh, True Value store. Mm -hmm. And the one they have, uh, it, it's, it said nothing on it. <laughs> and I'm looking at this. All the screws were the same color, and I couldn't figure it out. And so what they have is two little raised bumps on one side. So, in fact, I called the manufacturer, and I said, I, I, I can't figure out how to wire this four-way switch. And it's actually, they had two little bumps on it. But there's going to be some type of either indicator, indicator what to connect to. So how do you wire a four-way switch? So you need to look in the electrical box, and there's going to be a pair of wires coming from one cable and another pair coming from another cable. So right. you need to find whatever the indicator is, either input or output or different colored screws, and you're going to connect the two travelers from one cable to that pair and then the other cable to the other identified pair. So the next type of switch you can have is a double switch. So you have two switches on one body. And this is designed for electrical boxes that are really designed, the smaller electrical boxes designed for a single switch. The way this works is, let's say for example, you have two single pole switches on one body, so on this double switch. It actually matters which wire is connected to which screw terminal. Because so, this, so on this switch, each switch is controlling two different fixture so Correct. like in your bathroom one switch will control the light the other switch can control your fan exactly it's a great example and in this case so you we have a feed wire that's going to be feeding one side of the switches and it's supplying the electricity for the two switches okay let's discuss what how many screw terminals there are so on one side you have two screw terminals that are connected by a metal tab and this is a breakaway tab in case you were to have two circuits coming into this box. Okay, time out. Let's talk about what a circuit is so everybody can understand. So a circuit is just a loop of power. So coming from your service panel, whether you have fuses or circuit breakers, you've got a uh, you've got a wire that's taking a path through, let's say, to the bathroom, and it goes to the bathroom, it feeds your switches, your outlets, and then it comes back to the service panel. So you've got black wires going to your switches, your outlets, and lights, mm -hmm. and then white wires coming back in a loop to the service panel. And it's this constant loop. This is your circuit it right. run and by, let's say, a, a circuit breaker for that group of lights or outlets. So on a circuit, several different rooms could be on the same circuit. Right, depending on how your house is wired, yes. But in this case, it's important, even though these are single pole switches, a traditional single pole switch, it doesn't matter which screw terminal you connect because it's just a break in a hot. In the case of a double switch and the same with a triple switch, you need to know the feed wire. So before you remove a double or triple switch, you'd want to mark the wire that's going to the screw terminal on the side with a breakaway metal tab. Right. And then the other two wires are going to be going, what, like, for your example with the bathroom, One's going up to the fan, one's going up to the, the light. Right. And then if you were to remove, let's say, a double or triple switch, and you didn't know which wire to connect, we'd do the same method as we did with the three-way switch. We're going to separate the wires, we're going to turn back on the electric, we're going to test the wires to find the feed, the wire coming from the service panel, the hot wire, and that's we're going to mark that, and that's going to go to the screw terminal with the two screws 
connected with the metal tab. Okay. And in this case, you're going to connect either screw. It doesn't matter which screw on that tab side because that feeds the electricity is going to pass through the tab mm -hmm. and feed both sides of the switch. So since I cut you off before, if you have two circuits coming into that box and controlling that light or that switch, yes, you would break that metal tab. So if you saw two wires and that tab broke, and that's why it's so important that we're looking at switches and outlets to look at these tabs, because if they're broken, that means that we have two different circuits that are powering that switch. And then with the new switch, you'd have to take a needle nose pliers and break off that tab, and then each switch would be controlled independently by a different circuit. So another switch you can get is a dimmer switch. Okay. These come in single pole switch variety or the three-way. Right. You have to pay attention to your to the packaging. And there's some companies now that have a combo, so they have a little piece of tape over one of the screw terminals, one of the travelers, so they're actually packaging a three-way switch, three-way dimmer, and you can use it either as a three-way or a single pole. So just be aware when you're looking at the packaging, it might be confusing, but you, you want to identify what type of switch it is. Okay, what does a dimmer switch look like? So, well, I, a lot of different companies. Some have, uh, like the Decora, like to, it's a rectangular shape that pushes on and off, mm -hmm. and then on the side it has a little sliding lever to control the amount of light. Some have just a tab that slides up and down. So there's a few different styles of dimmers. I really well, meant more like the screw, screw terminals. So one thing with some of the dimmers is rather than a traditional screw terminal, you have wire leads. So they have a short little wire that you're going to connect. And in this case, when you're connecting a regular switch on a screw terminal, you generally are going to strip about three quarters of an inch of the insulation and create a little hook that goes underneath the screw terminal. Mm -hmm. If you have a wire lead, like on some of these dimmer switches, you're going to straighten out your wires now and you're going to connect them with wire connectors. And one trick, if you are connecting a solid wire, let's say that's coming from your electrical box, to a stranded wire, and you're connecting it with a wire connector that has those little metal springs inside. Right. What you want to do is you want to trim your solid wire out of your electrical box to about a half an inch is stripped away, the insulation. Mm -hmm. And on the wire lead to the dimmer, you want five-eighths. So you want that stranded wire slightly longer. And when you insert this into the wire connector, that stranded wire is going to tie up inside that metal spring and it's really going to tie this together nice because stranded wire is really kind of slippery right when you try to connect stranded wire to solid wire it's it's very difficult for it to grab so if you take that stranded wire a little bit longer and shove it into the tip of the wire connector you're going to get a fantastic connection so just be aware that there's wire leads on some of these i think all manufacturers come with the wire connectors with it can you use a dimmer switch on a ceiling fan? No, you would never want to use a dimmer because you have the potential for a fire. So for the fan to start up, if, it, if there's not enough electricity going to it, you huh. can overheat that motor and, and it has the potential for a fire. So if you're looking to control fan speed, you need to buy a switch that specifically says it's a fan speed control switch and it'll have three different settings, three different speeds, and it's a, it's a real specific design. So no, you would never want to use a dimmer to control fan speed. Can you please explain a motion sensor switch? So I just put one of these in my mom's condo. Her, the uh, president of her condo was complaining that people were leaving the light on in the laundry room. And so a motion sensor switch is very similar to a double switch. You need to know the feed side and the load side. So you're going to read the instructions and every company is a little different. I think this had a black wire and a red wire. Mm -hmm. But you're going to turn the circuit off, remove the old one, separate your wires, turn back on the electric, find the hot wire, which is your feed, and then there's a specific screw terminal or wire that you're going to connect this to. And then when... Because uh, that's controlling the motion sensor? Right. And then when there's motion, it turns it on and there's some type of way to dial in either the sensitivity or the length of how long it stays on. So they wanted theirs to stay on like 10 minutes right. and we just adjusted the dial. But, but really nice, especially if, you know, for landlords, for, you know, like in this situation in a condo, you know, if you have people that aren't shutting off lights, it really helps conserve energy. So that's, uh, you know, just another nice switch that you can pick up. Where can people use this like in their homes? 
in a home i you know i don't know if it like would it be maybe in a garage or like a utility it, room yeah maybe and anywhere i guess if you have kids or someone mm-hmm. who's just not turning the, the lights back off or you know maybe for safety like if you have somebody older you know because when it picks up motion right depending on uh, the sensitivity you set it turns on and then you know it'll turn itself off at a predetermined time I think that ends this episode. If you'd like to subscribe, you can subscribe on iTunes or Stitcher Radio. If you enjoyed it, please leave a review. Tell a friend. And if you'd like to see any of our home improvement videos, you can check out our YouTube channel. It's called Fix It Home Improvement Channel on YouTube. You can subscribe to that as well. And if you want to contact us, you can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week. Do you